Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today in this video, I'm going to share with you how important training your peripheral vision can be for not only your performance, but also for decreasing pain. So what is peripheral vision? Well, it is being able to see what you're not actually looking at. So what I mean is, as I look at you, the camera, I'm still able to sense what's happening around me by using my peripheral vision. So our peripheral vision is actually one of our senses. Now we kind of take it for granted because we don't really notice it that much. It's very reflexive, it's just working for us. And if you have good peripheral vision, you're able to pick up on things in your periphery really well. And of course, that's a very uh, critical athletic skill, but it goes beyond just athletics. Now, remember peripheral vision is a skill, it's a sense, and just like all skills and all senses that we have, what you don't use, you can lose. And so it is actually possible for your peripheral vision or your skill of using your peripheral vision to decrease over time. What that means is you're just not as good at being aware of what's around you when you're not actually looking directly at it. And this presents a whole host of problems. In fact, um, a decrease in your peripheral vision really drives up perceived threat levels. What that means is your brain does not like it when you cannot sense your environment well. So a decrease in peripheral vision drives up threat levels. We know that when threat levels increase, it leads to an increase in pain uh, and a decrease in our performance. So in this video, I'm going to teach you a really, really simple assessment that you can do on yourself to get an understanding for how good or maybe how lousy your peripheral vision is. And then I'll talk to you about how you can use that information and bring it into your training to start to make your peripheral vision better, to stimulate it. And it's actually really fascinating because it can have a very profound influence on the pain that you feel and your overall performance. Are you ready? Here we go. Okay, so let's get started testing your peripheral vision. Now, this actually works better if you have somebody to do this for you. And I'll talk about what I mean by that in a moment but the, uh, the self-assessment version still is very useful and it's at least a great starting point. So here's how you do that. What you're going to do is stand in a neutral stance, make sure you're in good posture. And all you're gonna do is what we call like the bunny ears test, where you take your bunny ears and you start to move them. And what I'm gonna do is move my arms behind me so that I cannot see my hands. They are outside of my peripheral vision, okay? Because my hands are basically starting to be behind me, okay? And I'm gonna start moving the bunny ears. And what I'm gonna do is slowly bring them in until I start to sense them. Now I'm looking at you, the camera, that's my visual target. You cannot look at your hands, that's cheating. So by looking at my visual target, I'm starting to pick up on the movement. I'm just barely right on the line of being able to sense it. Now, what I can tell you is this one over here on my left, I can sense really good right now. This one on the right, I'm finding it slightly more challenging. So I'm gonna bring that one a little bit further forward, about right there. And now I'm just gonna kind of get a sense for where I'm at. And actually, um, both are, are about in the same place. So that's good, okay? Now, if it takes you a little bit, I don't know, too long to sense these, right? Let's say, you don't see it, you don't see them. Oh, there they are, okay? And if you look at me from the side, you know, my hands are now passing my shoulder line. That is not good, okay? Ideally, you should be able to sense both sides, okay? And you want to at least be at the shoulder line. And actually, I've seen some athletes who have amazing peripheral sense be able to um, to see what seems like behind them, which is wild, but sometimes you'll assess somebody that's really good with this skill and you'll basically, they'll tell you, oh yeah, right there. Um, and that's generally a blind spot for most people. It's, uh, it's pretty fascinating. You will see quite a difference in people's skill level with uh, peripheral vision testing. Okay, so for me, I tested this, um, this middle area and it was fairly symmetric and pretty good. Now, to make this test more thorough, and this is what I meant by bringing in a second person to help do this, because when I test this on people, I stand behind them, 
and I usually test six different zones. So I wanna test up here, okay, the upper ones, the middle ones like we just did, and then the lower ones. Now you can do that on yourself, okay? Here's my bunny ears, and I'm sensing the movement right about there, and I can look to see where I'm at. Now, I'm in front of my shoulder line, okay? So ideally, I'd like to be better than that, okay? So I gotta, I gotta maybe do some work on my peripheral vision down low, okay? So that's one possibility, and of course, I can do the same thing up here. Now, this is a little bit different, about right, there is where I'm seeing movement, okay? And that's decent. You're gonna find that in the upper stuff, um, you know, because the contours of your face and stuff are kind of blocking, uh, you won't necessarily have as widespread peripheral vision up here as you do here in the middle. So where I kind of am is what I'm used to seeing from most people. But I will tell you that um, originally when I first tested my peripheral vision, and this was over 10 years ago, I had a really blurry spot, I guess we'll call it, kind of a zone where I had really lousy peripheral awareness and it was on the upper left. Now I've done some work to you know, focus towards that quadrant to um, restore my ability to see things there with my peripheral vision. But to give you an idea, when it was tested, I didn't really see it until my hand was about here and that is not good, okay? That's, that's quite a bit uh, in front of me. And as I started to kind of learn about that and think through this and, you know, kind of ask myself questions like, how could this possibly be affecting me? It actually became really clear that several of the athletic injuries that I had during my wrestling career probably happened to me because I was not able to sense movement very well in this upper left. And every time I was taken down, and I didn't really know why or how. Um, a lot of the, uh, the attacks from my opponent were coming from what would be my upper left, that upper left quadrant. You know, when you're in a wrestling stance and you're low, right, um, you have to have good peripheral vision so that you can sense attacks coming from uh, different sides, different directions. So, you know, there's so many different ways we could kind of look at decreased peripheral vision and get a, uh, an understanding of how that could reach into your life. Um, whether it is performance based, if you're an athlete or you're just, you know, you're just an average person, right? Going about your day. You need great peripheral vision too, and you need good peripheral skills for survival, right? When you're out and you're walking around in the town and doing things, you have to be able to sense your environment. You have to be able to sense danger, right? So you need good peripheral vision as well. It's not just about athletes. Okay, so just to summarize now, we have done a basic assessment on peripheral awareness. We've tested the middle and you can go ahead and test upper and you can go ahead and test lower. And what you're looking for are side to side differences. Like I told you I originally found. You might see, you might experience that your peripheral awareness is quite good on the right and a little bit limited on the left or maybe you're going to be able to kind of zoom in on one quadrant that was really lousy compared to the others. I want you to mark your findings on this, okay? Try it a few times, mark your findings, and then I'll share with you what to do next. Okay, you've tested your peripheral vision. You have an understanding now for whether or not you have a weak side or maybe more precisely a weak area. Now here's how you can proceed to start to see if this could be a useful thing for you. You have to assess how the stimulus is helping you, or maybe it's not helping you, right? You got to know, right? So we need to run some form of assessment. So here's what I would want you to do. If you have neck pain or back pain or something like that, you would want to use that discomfort or pain or maybe movement as part of your assessment. So let's say you have a lot of neck tension. Sometimes it's painful test those neck motions and get a sense for, you know, how, how does it feel to move your neck? And you know, what's the quality of that? And uh, scale it, right? If, uh, if you kind of have like a three out of 10 for pain, then no, it's a three out of 10 and scale it. Do the same for any body part. Um, so you can use pain as your assessment. You can also use any kind of movement or mobility goal that you might have. So let's say you want to see if peripheral stimulus could help you with improving your deep squat mobility or your overhead positioning. Any movement goal is just fine because peripheral stimulus can actually have very global effects on all these different things. So the number one thing first is that you have an assessment. 
After you have your assessment, now you're going to train the weak area. And there's several ways that you can do that. The first thing I'm just going to explain, and it's something you can go and try. One of the things that is quite useful for people that have decreased peripheral vision on one side of their body is something called a peripheral awareness walk. So let's say you're outside, you're going on your daily walk, which hopefully you have scheduled into your life. What you're going to do is as you walk, let's say my right side is not, not as good, okay, with my peripheral awareness, I'm gonna walk and I'm going to kind of keep repetitively asking myself the question, what do I see over on this right side without actually looking over there? So as you're walking along, you know, you might be kind of saying this, you know, internally to yourself, okay, white mailbox, black fence, there's a big pine tree, I think. Okay, there's my neighbor's house. And I think I see that they're parked on, you know, in their driveway up on the hill. Remember, you're not actually looking you're trying to sense what's there while still looking straight ahead. This is called a peripheral awareness walk. And it actually can be amazing for people just for um, general health, but also for decreasing pain. So you might do this for five, 10, 15 minutes, and then you can retest with whatever assessment you have on hand to see how it's affecting you. Okay, so that's one idea um, that's just kind of cool to explore when you're out for your walk. Now. In more of a training context, right? You're in the gym, whatever, you're at home, you're in your, your training studio, how can we use this? So one of the things that I like to do is use my phone, okay? And you need some, something on your phone that's going to act as um, visual stimulus. So maybe easiest thing to do is like put a YouTube video on and just decrease the sound like all the way down and then as this video is playing on my screen, I'm not looking at it, but because the screen is changing every half second to maybe two and a half seconds, that light information of the changing screen is something that I'm sensing. And so for me, remember my story of the upper left um, being weaker? I would put my phone in the upper left quadrant here and I would challenge myself. I would want it in a place where I was still able to sense the changes in light the screen changes, but I have to work hard to do that. So it's not gonna be like right here because that's too easy. Instead, I'm gonna challenge myself, okay? So that's one idea. And the cool thing about that is you can add the peripheral stimulus to other things that you're doing. Okay, so this is where a lot of the applied neurology concepts that I love to teach other movement professionals come into play because peripheral stimulus, like I'm describing, is a wonderful stacking mechanism for other drills. And what that means is we're adding a stimulus to something else that you're doing so that we can create a more powerful stimulus for your brain. So oftentimes, uh, like with our mobility drills, we do a lot of joint mo mobilizations we'd be using peripheral stimulus at the same time as doing some kind of movement drill, whatever that might be. And there would be specific reasons for why we put the peripheral stimulus here, why we move this wrist or this wrist. Um, there's just a lot that goes into it. But the part I'm trying to share with you that you can explore on your own if you don't have any experience with all that stuff yet is putting the peripheral stimulus in any of these zones that we talked about, if it's your weak zone, while you're doing other stuff, lunges, squats, push-ups, maybe all the things you like to do in your workouts, whatever the case might be, whatever form of mobility work you're practicing, get yourself to focus on that peripheral stimulus for a decent chunk of time, right? Uh, it could be as short as 30 seconds, but you could also do it for a minute, minute and a half, and then immediately retest. Go back to whatever it is you're doing. If it's a performance goal, try that thing. If it's a pain relief goal, make that movement and see if your pain has decreased. You will be mind blown how stimulating that weak zone can actually have very, very big um, results for you in a number of different categories. Okay, so hopefully that's very that's clear and you can you can execute that. Last thing I wanna share. When it comes to taking this to the next level and using peripheral vision to not only decrease pain like we've been talking about or improve mobility, but also to just really enhance your 
uh, the skill of your peripheral vision, maybe if you're an athlete, the best thing to do is to add some kind of cognitive load to the drill. So maybe you have a training partner that's gonna stand kind of off to your side and they're gonna flash numbers in your periphery. Two and one. And you're gonna be doing some sort of athletic skill, whatever, and you're gonna say three, right? You're gonna do basic math, okay? Two plus one is three. And they're gonna show you another set of numbers and you're gonna do some basic math. That's, a, that's one idea. Now it doesn't have to be numbers, right? There's so many different things you could do with creativity. The whole idea is you want somebody to do some form of problem solving using their peripheral sense while not actually looking at it. And it could be as simple as, tell me when you see this movement. Now, now, now. And you're stimulating them and really bringing their attention there over and over and over again. That adds a lot of cognitive load to, uh, to the drill. And as I said, when you start training the areas that you're, you're weaker in, it can be really, really cool uh, what can happen, not only from an athletic standpoint, but for improving all those things that we've been discussing, like decreasing pain and improving mobility. All right, guys, that's what I had planned for you today. I hope you enjoyed this lesson on the skill of peripheral vision and how uh, peripheral vision can be used as a stimulus to help you with a lot of the movement goals that you have. I hope you try it, I really do. This is one of those things that when I teach athletes or I teach movement professionals, they always kind of feel like, how could this be impactful? And they are always blown away by the results. So give this a try. And if you have any questions as you work through the process, feel free to ask me those questions in the comments because I'd love to help you out. That's it for today. I'll see you in the next video.